Hello there, time for a few empties, or more than a few actually. I've been hanging on to products for this video since late last year, so the pile has grown so much I've had to split this topic into two. Starting with bath and body products because they've been in high rotation in the past few months, then we'll cover skincare and makeup another time. Every single empty or almost empty in this video is something I've already repurchased and continued to use so you can tell I'm a fan. A couple of general points first before we get onto the products. I mentioned in my last empties way back in March 2019 that these types of videos always make me so aware of how much plastic is part of our beauty routines. I'm planning to talk about sustainability in beauty in future, but I wanted to mention how I manage my beauty waste so none of this goes to landfill. Many of these bottles can go into my regular recycling bin, always check what's accepted in your local area, and for all other non-recyclable bits like toothpaste, tubes, pumps, other packaging that can't go in regular recycling, I use a company called TerraCycle. They break down and repurpose products that aren't traditionally recyclable. I found them last year. They have drop-off points and locations in stores across the US, here in Australia and other countries, so you can have a look online to see if there's a spot near you. Sometimes individual stores might partner with TerraCycle or have their own recycling stations. I've seen them in L'Occitane, Liberty in London and some in Mecca in Australia, so please share if you've found any similar recycling options and it might help someone near you. Another quick tip to get the most out of your empties before you recycle them is to cut into any tube products. Even if you squeeze the life out of them, there's usually a bit more hiding near the lid. I do one final squeeze to get everything to the bottom of the tube, cut down low, and there you go. Even though nothing else was coming out when I squeezed it, there's usually a few more uses inside. If there's even more than that, like in this case, you can cover it back up with the top of the tube or a bit of cloth or paper just to block out any dust. Onto the empties. Baths have been my favorite self-care step since before the term self-care was even around when I was young. I'll be sharing more soon on my sort of Sunday ritual I go through every week. Baths have been particularly comforting for me lately, but if you don't have one at your place, a hot steamy shower can certainly help revive you too. This Olverum bath oil bottle unfortunately got knocked over and the lid and lip smashed, so I lost a little bit of it, but about three quarters was saved luckily, and I've almost used it all up. The scent is like nothing else I've ever experienced. It's so strong and instantly puts you in a spa-like state. Eucalyptus, lavender, verbena, lemon, lime, rosemary and geranium. Heaven. These Knipe eucalyptus bath salts are a German brand I buy in France, but this label is in Dutch so it's a big European mix here. These bottles were in my French Pharmacy Favourites video, great bath salts with a super strong eucalyptus scent. One of my favourites so I always buy backups. Radox is a British bath brand but it's available closer to home in supermarkets here in Australia. I I've used their Muscle Soak liquids for years, the blue one with sage and sea minerals is my pick, and their Muscle Soothe bath salts are a very fine bright green powder I like to sprinkle into baths too and make a bit of a redox cocktail. Our hands have certainly been under more pressure lately. Here are a couple of hand washes I've used up, definitely forgot to hang on to some other empties like Jolique's Rose Hand Wash which I love and their Lemon, Geranium and Sage scent too. Aesop's Resurrection Aromatic Hand Wash will always be my top hand wash treat. This is in the brand's signature mandarin rind, rosemary leaf and cedar atlas scent. I find it has a slightly thicker consistency than other hand washes. It lathers up so well so a little bit goes a long way and I can make it last for a long time and it never dries out my hands. Aesop's Reverence Aromatic Hand Wash on the other hand is an exfoliating version. The vetiver root, petit grain and bergamot rind formula has a much more earthy scent and finely ground pumice gives it a gritty feel so you get a really good clean. This is usually something I'd use if my hands get really grotty cleaning or gardening. Finally, Molten Brown's Orange and Bergamot Fine Liquid Hand Wash has been one of my favourites for a decade. In my favourite scents video earlier this year, I talked about the power of scent memories and how the smell of a particular product can instantly remind you of a person or take you back to a particular place. And I first used this scent in Istanbul, so it's a bit of escapism and always reminds me of one of my favourite cities. I've been a daily hand cream user for years, but have really been reaching for these tubes more frequently at the moment. You can hear more about all of these formulas in my recent hand cream video, so I'll just run through them briefly. Go to Super Handy, an Aussie favourite with a lovely orange blossom scent and fast absorbing, non greasy feel. Quarterly Hand and Nail Cream, a simple, smooth, lightweight cream and another French pharmacy favourite. Aesop Resurrection Aromatic Hand Balm, more of a light lotion texture from one of our biggest Aussie brands that went global. Rodin Crema, a super thick and luxurious ointment like texture with a dreamy jasmine and nerily scent. By Terry Bomme de Rose, another high-end option from one of my favourite French beauty brands with their signature soft rose scent. 
and Jo Malone's Vitamin E Hand Treatment, a super nourishing, rich formula that leaves my hands feeling soft and supple. Quite a few body care bits here across the body wash, exfoliator, and lotion categories. If you've followed me on YouTube or Instagram for a while, you'll be no stranger to Necessaire. They've been in every yearly favorites video or body care roundup since I started using the brand in late 2018. It's a simple, sustainable line of body care essentials from LA. I've got so many friends hooked on their silky smooth, foaming body wash. I'll always have a soft spot for eucalyptus as an Aussie, but sandalwood is something I go through just as often. It's a nice, warm scent that's not too woody, it's still refreshing. Alongside that eucalyptus body wash, you can spot this Aesop geranium leaf body cleanser in my favorite scents video. Geranium is always something I'm drawn to, so I've been using this one for years. It has a thicker texture than necessary. I would love to see them introduce a geranium scent too. Last year, I also enjoyed this Malin and Getz Rum Body Wash. Like that hand wash scent memory I mentioned, this was a body wash I used in Madrid a couple of years ago. I've enjoyed other Malin and Getz products over the years, but the scent of this one really reeled me in. I'm not a rum drinker, but it just smells really refreshing and almost a bit citrusy. This Aesop Geranium Leaf Body Scrub got a lot of love last year. I love body exfoliators that have a gritty feel but really lather up rather than being thick, creamy or pasty. So the gel texture of this with little bits of pumice is perfect and it's been a long-term love of mine. Then the best body lotion in my bathroom. I've sung the praises of Necessaire's formula many times. Nothing makes my skin as soft as this. It's super smooth, not too thick or heavy so it sinks in nicely and it creates such soft, supple skin skin. Seriously, nothing beats the feeling of clean sheets and smooth post-lotion legs using this. But there's one final body bit here, deodorant. I've been really enjoying several different natural deodorant formulas this year, but this Malin and Getz Mini was the first one I bought last year. This one definitely has the best, most realistic eucalyptus scent out of a few different brands I've tried. Plenty of lip balm addicts in this community, so I'm definitely planning more of this content soon. You can catch up on some of my favorites and some tinted balms in recent videos, but these are what I've completely finished off. As you can see, I've been through a few by Terry Bomb de Rose pots in the past six to eight months. Two are completely empty and this one's getting very low. This famous Lux lip balm was something I'd heard about for years and it took me years to justify the price, but as you can tell, it's become a favorite I keep repurchasing. I love layering this rose scented balm on before bed and really working it into my lips so it almost melts in. This Blistex lip conditioner is nearly finished too. I can't tell you how many of these I've used up over the years. This pot and the Bomb de Rose pot are my two favorite repairing balms that always do the trick if my lips are really dry. Blistex formulas seem to vary from country to country, so this is the Aussie version. Then this quarterly lip conditioner is right down to the bottom. I've mentioned this in a couple of videos this year, my most used lip balms, French pharmacy favorites too, and I discovered that so many of you are a fan of it as well. Definitely one of the creamiest, most nourishing stick balms I've come across. Across. A few nail empties now. Can you tell how much I love Olive and June's cuticle serum? This twist up sponge tip pen gives your cuticles and nails an easy hit of hydration and it sinks straight in so it's so much easier to use than a cuticle oil. I find these last me about a month but I use it every night and apply quite a lot so you might get a bit more life out of it if you don't twist it as many times as I do. I've also become a big fan of nail polish remover pots. Love Olive and June's remover pot and the coconut scented nail zinc rapid remover pot. If you're a regular at home mani person like me, they're so convenient to dip your finger in, twist it around and pull it out completely polish free. The only thing is after a while the sponge can start to deteriorate and little bits come off so I'd love it if these brands launched refills in future. The sponges can also get quite stained by the polish so I try to remember to use one to remove light colours and one for reds and darks. The fanciest part of my nail routine is this Chanel nail polish remover. It's one of the few formulas I've tried that won't stink out your whole house and it actually smells really nice and quite rosy. Since swapping to remover pots though, I've been finishing off the last little bit of this by dipping my Olive and June cleanup brush in and making my mani super neat. I prefer dipping the brush into a regular bottle instead of those pots because getting a tiny bit of sponge stuck in the polish you just painted on is so frustrating. You can hear more on my mani routine in a tutorial on my channel. Long time viewers will know if I have a sheer pale pink polish on in my videos, there's a pretty good chance it's Essie Gel Couture in Fairy Tailor. It's the polish I've repurchased most in my entire life and this one has certainly seen better days. All right out and past the point of no return. Not a lot happening in the hair section. I've definitely finished some shampoo and conditioner from brands like Aveda and Playa and forgot to hang on to them. So I've only
finally got dry shampoo to share. Chlorine is another French pharmacy favorite and my number one dry shampoo. It refreshes my hair, doesn't have a sickly sweet strong scent and doesn't make my dark brown hair look gray. I've definitely gone through more than two but forgot to keep those as well. That's part one done. Let me know what sort of products you've been using up this year. Are you going through more bath and body bits too if you're at home more or are you running your skincare down faster? You'll see other products I've been using up in another installment in future. Please share some of your most common empties and items you always repurchase. Thanks for watching. See you next time.